Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, Farmer Evo Extreme here. Here we are on the 4th of April 2024, and we've got some sweet new mods today. We've got six new mods, that's not including two maps. Also we've had 40 updates, including eight maps, and I think two, three, four of them may require an update, so I'll go over the change log of those now. Starting off with Nameless. And yeah, is change lock 1.2.0.0. A new game save is needed. Added dairy and bakery. And um, your system is ready for PC only. Next is Bugland Farm by MS Modding. Update 1.0.0.2. New game save is required. Added seasonal hedges. Fix sheep grazing area grass on the road. Garden center accept spells. Fix collisions on some roads. Minora now spawns in cow barn, correct the TMR ingredients and adjusted the pig straw location. Next we got Black River change log 2.0.0.0. This is by Zero Oito. And yeah, new game save is required because it's got 34 new productions. Adjustments to the map productions, expanded the city area, changed the locations of the gas station, carpentry and others. Removed line deficit for new factories, removed the point of sale by train due to an issue. Added a new factory in mine. Changes the deprivation of the lizard logistics. And it is now universal point of sale. Two new points of sales, hotel and construction area. Adjustments to the main highway and new vehicle traffic. New farm in new farm remote. Change the decorative outside of the map. Small adjustments to the field and reposition some close to the city, add some placeables and new collectibles. So I'm hoping we see some of this with every valley and that can come back on mod hub. Pretty sure it doesn't require a new game save because otherwise the anti boy would have said, but I thought worth noting. Early 1.2 to Stone Valley 22. Branded names removed, road collisions fixed, cell points fixed, field sizes fixed. Horses fix and is a key note because there has been some mod conflicts. Please check your mods folder plus also watch how many mods you are using that has fill types, i.e. the crops, and this can create a issue with mod conflicting. Stone Valley as is at its limit for crops. Next we've got the Elmwood Rochester, this is by AE Mapping. Doesn't say it needs an update, but new different fill fruit types has been added. In addition to the map, a new vehicle has been added. Changes were made to the agriculture area so that rice can be planted. And additional bug fixes were made on the map, so that sounds like it does require a new game save, but I'm not sure. So that is the change log done for the maps. I think needs an update. Some do say needs an update, others I'm not too sure. But anyways, so we're going to start off with our equipment. So starting off with, we've got the... APV ES 100 M1. This is by Omzi. 5.89 megabytes to download. Three slots for console. And yeah, this is a cedar, so you find it under tools and cedars. Head towards the end. 1300 to buy. 200 liter capacity weighs 29 kilograms. Could do a 10.8 meter spread at 9 meters of record width. Ah uh, yeah, essentially this is for your like grass fields and that, so you can do grass, canola, and also radish. So yeah, let's hop into our John Deere here a sec. Ah uh, yeah, between mod views, I have gone around and revitalized the map, so everything's a bit neat for now. But yeah, anyway, so get us hooked up. So yeah, let's do canola. So a 10 meter spread. It's hard to see where we've placed. There we go. Yeah, just about to see where we've placed. And actually, if you've got this raised up and not lowered, technically you can do fast farming with this. So yeah, actually it's a bit nice, so but are we getting everything? So let's do one more pass down and then have a little look. And 
And the answer is yes. We always miss bits and that where we've just gone a bit all skew wifty and that. But yeah, have that race up. That is way too fast for him in that. And yeah, you've got like 2,000 litre front tanks you can get with the Vajrad Cedar. Or I think under base game, we've got. Where is it? Under Cedars? Yeah, they could in that. An extra 1,500 litres of seed. Get that attached. And then you've got a 1,700 litre seed spreader. Also, of course, I can only do grass, OC radish, and canola. But. Yep, yeah, fast farming with that. I did not realise that. So yeah, that is the APV ES 100 M1 by Omzi. Next, we've got the Lizard 3 point hitch transport box. This is by 76 Max. 3.32 megabytes to download. Free source for console. It's got a 2000 litre capacity. So yeah, it's a 3 point link hitch transport box that can support grains and all that. So yeah, obviously you tend to unfold if you want to. There we go. And yeah, once that's done, you stuff, put stuff on here. Do you have tension strap options, so... So yeah, let's go over here a sec. So yeah, you've got a fold option. Got lower and lift. L1, R1. Obviously tips. L1, R1. for the cab. So I can't figure out what L1R1 and right stick up and down does. So I, yeah, something do nothing with the John Deere here. Up and down. So yeah, I'm not too sure on that. But anyways, you'll find this under Tools and Miscellaneous. Oh yeah, just head towards near the end. So yeah, 1900 to purchase. And yes, no colour options or anything like that. So yep, that is the Lizard 3 point hitch transport box by 76 Max. Next, moving on to a mod that calls me a huge pain in the rear. And yeah, once we get through this mod, you, ex you understand my frustration. I spent half an hour on this mod. Because yeah, I was figuring out how to get a thousand litres of nails and all that. But anyways... <laughs> This is the Backyard Woodshop Sheds. This is by Nailwell Gaming. 12.56 MB stamina is available for all platforms and that. Slot cams is 20, 22, and 14 slots. And yeah, you do have a cell point that is two slots there, two or three slots there. So yeah, let's go to our productions. So yeah, it says backyard woodshop sheds. Obviously, it's productions and that. So yeah, for the pallet production, that is 20 slots. Then it goes down to 22 for the backyard woodshop shed, and then 14 slots for the pallet company. So the goal with this is to produce. You can produce fence panels, workbenches, small sheds, and got a bit of war as a waste product. Also, you've got an option to produce planks, wood beams, OSB plywood, and wood chips from the pallet production. Obviously, your main goal is the beams and planks, and plywood and wood chips is just a waste product. But yeah, so you need planks, wood beams, and empty pallets to get all the fences, workbenches, and small sheds. So yeah, getting planks in into this one here was a huge pain in the ass. Like, I've got planks here, and these will not go in. The only way to get planks in here is to transfer it from another production. The planks from the pallet company is very slow, like, about, what's that? Ooh, a thousand years a month, so very slow, in that. That's what I first thought. No, a thousand years is more than enough, but we'll get to that in a sec. But yeah, so I ended up using like the, oh, was it Platinum expansion that you use? Yeah, get planks from that and transfer over. But yeah, so nails also goes in here. They are three slots each for a pallet of nails, so they can be found under pallets. Somewhere at the start, I think it was, so yeah. 
a thousand years on nils and again that is enough yeah cost 380 free salts goes down to one because yeah so kind of ratios is sick that is yeah i'll say a few pallets on nils a month not too much and this one here ignore what it says like a thousand nils and that because yeah 360 cycles a month that is more than enough so what you do is you produce your pallets and that transfer it over here same with your planks and that once they're all over here with some nails whack it on of course got no nails in at the moment but yeah combined with the wood beams and empty pallets you get fences workbench and small sheds as i mentioned and these are worth absolute phenomenal amounts of money so yeah let's go to our prices a sec so empty pallets two and a half grand typical your plywood two and a half grand give or take not too bad your wood beams yep typical not too bad two and a half grand however going to the small sheds that is 27 million pounds for a thousand liters of small shits for defense panels that is two million and for the workbench 8.4 mil 8.5 mil but yeah don't get ahead of yourselves the output is a lot lower so for a shed to come out that is one liter so a thousand of what we've just seen next we've got yeah i've got too many pallets so yeah, next i've got the workbench again that's a thousandth and then lastly got our fence panels and these are 10 years so a hundredth so yeah fence panels a hundredth of that so yeah you know what let's go and sell this so for one of these you get 23 grand for your workbench, whack that in. You get eight grand, and for your shed, you get about twenty-seven grand. So overall, I say these are extremely worth it. And yeah, they're liftable and a piece of piss to move. Go to the pallet company. Yeah, you can't move these plywoods. Yeah, these are extremely heavy. And similar story with the empty pallets. So if we go over here. So yeah, these are yep. Yeah, can't lift those, so need to distribute those over. And yeah, just ignore those planks over there. Just, yeah, just ignore those. So yeah, for a very small output, or low output it seems, you can rake in hundreds of thousands, if not millions, from this, so that is the Backyard Woodshop Sheds by Newell Gaming. Next, we've got a package of commercial investment properties. This is by, once again, Newell Gaming. 30.38 megabytes to download. Slot count extremely varies from 8 to 39 slots. 39 slots is one that says Cody's Toys, but essentially these are placeable buildings or placeable generators so under build mode productions and generators so yeah got a variety of buildings got 18 in total income per hour varies from 205 to 1340 per hour so yeah that equates to upwards to yeah, 20 grand a month, 15 grand a month, 5 grand a month, 22, 32 grand a month, 13 grand a month. Ooh. Oh no, <laughs> I'll say 6 to 7 grand, no, that's just wind turbine. So yeah, you're looking at, depending on what you're going for, from yeah, 8,000 or so a month, and yeah, potentially upwards to 30, 40,000 almost. Yeah, thirty-two thousand. That is just from one property. And yeah, there's no color option. Yeah, apologies there. Mike just died in that, or the controller just died. So yeah, slot counts in that eight to thirty-nine. 
And the biggest one is the Cody Toys one here. That is 39 slots. And this little generic one here is 8 slots. Again, it's not down to how much they produce a month. It's all down to like the detailing and that. So, yeah, back on the generators. So, yeah, in total, you can produce upwards to 32 grand a month. Or as low as 5,000. So, if you want a job in that, you know, get a bit of monthly pay in that. Or, you're, again, take a gamble, invest in the stock market, and it works out between an extra 5 grand a month in your bank account. Upwards to 32 grand per month. So, yeah, that is the commercial investment properties by Newell Gaming. Next. I hope you like vegetables and juices because we've got the vegetable juice process, and this is by D90023. 3.66 megabytes to download. Slot count is 15 slots for the factory, and sell point is. Yeah, just behind over here. And that is three slots. Get rid of that sec. So yeah, what is this? It is simply a juicer. And yeah, it does say it's recommended to use the premium DLC, so the latest DLC. So yeah, get your carrots and parsnip in that. Because yeah, obviously without the premium expansion, you can still do tomatoes and potato juices doesn't really affect on how much is required in that it's all the same input capacity is 250,000 liters and output is in the realm of 100 200,000 liters maybe but yeah the amount you're producing a month which is 12,000 liters a month yeah you got enough to last you a year easily yeah, 12,000 a month. Yeah, still checking my math, so yeah. Well, the input materials requires carrots, beetroot, parsnip, red carrots, potatoes, and tomatoes. It's a 3 to 1 ratio, but overall it is worth it. So, if we go to our prices, so let's look at uh, do, 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 do. Um, apple juice. Nope. So, yeah, let's look at our red bean at. Red beets and that carrots, round three four hundred per thousand. Remember, it's a three to one ratio. So yeah, red carrots. Look at this. Look at peat prices: four thousand. Parsnip three five hundred, and beetroot three five hundred. And yeah, beetroot and parsnip. Yeah, similar low prices. And I should have not seen that. So actually, if anything. Doing well, either of these is yeah, gonna be extremely profitable. And yeah, even doing tomatoes and potatoes and that. Best time to sell is, of course, in February. So, yeah, it's definitely worth it because you're looking at making what four, eight, twelve at least two to three times at minimum. And of course, that depends on best time sales, high demand, and other factors. So yeah, personally, I'll say go for it. So yeah, input is over here. Output is here. Again, also, it's similar to your base game, Great Production. So yeah, you'll find this under Productions. So yeah, under Factories, and go towards the end. So yeah, there it is. No colour options or anything. And yeah, slot count is 15 slots, goes down to 1. Cell point can be found under cell points. So yeah, got your cell point here, and if you want to be a bit cheeky in that, I think actually if you do something like that, sometimes this can work. Oh yeah, also, wow, that's actually a good thing. Didn't realise these are liftable pallets. So yeah, you can actually just lift these, whack them in a bell and pad storage or whatever you want. So yeah, not too bad on that. So yep, yeah, that is the vegetable juice processing by D90023. On to our final mod of the day. And it's a hectic one by Mr. Hector. And of course, I'm on about the orchids or orchards and greenhouses by Mr. Hector. This is very prone on his map, uh, was it, the Comparing Countryside. 
and now he's made it as a mod for us all to enjoy. So yeah, you can do either orchards or greenhouses, and unlike your base game stuff, these are a bit more advanced techniques required, so what does it require? Compost and special, oh yeah, specialty of fertilizer. So yeah, let's go to where they're placing that. So under productions and greenhouses. So you got your greenhouses here. Terms with slot counts. The small add medium greenhouses are eight slots, goes down to one. And your large greenhouse is nine slots, go down to one. So yeah, you got a normal version here. Produce some extra items, we'll look at those in a sec. Or you got one that just produces watermelons. And yeah, then go across to your orchids. So you've got an option to produce apple, pears, apricots and plums. These can be used to make jams and juices and all that. And yeah, slot count for these are all one each. So yeah, see these orchids here. Absolute beautiful. So yeah, all of them require compost, so compost goes in here. You do have a water and a fruit and vegetable fertilizer requirement, so yeah. The fruit and vegetable fertilizer is a IBC tank, so under pallets. Or actually, if you feel like we got too many mods, just go to your mods, orchards, greenhouses, so yeah. Compost, you can either make it yourself or purchase it. And yeah, three slots goes down to one for each of these, so... 1,000 litres for 250 quid, not too bad. And yeah, for the fruit and vegetable fertiliser, it is 2,900 for 2,000 litres. The problem you'll find is, with the compost, because we use compost on other maps and that, with various other mods, you can use pretty much any trailer to transport compost. However, with the IBC, IBC tank, I cannot find a tanker of anything that supports this, but all in all, you don't need much, because I've had this going on for, what, six, eight months now? And we've barely made a dent. In terms of capacities and that, the orchard holds 20,000 years of water, 4,000 years of the special fertilizer, and 20,000 years of compost. Moving on to the greenhouses, the capacities are for water, 5, 10 and 20,000 years from small, medium to large. Compost is 10, 20 and 40,000 years from small, medium to large. And all of them holds 4,000 years of the special fertilizer. So we've got our one of our large ones here. And yeah, no, that's a fill. We do have our bunker silo over here somewhere. Or our compost silo. But yeah, so, compost goes in here. You do have your organic waste produced as a byproduct. And your fertilizer goes in here, so... Yeah, let's actually go down and have a look. So, obviously you can produce your tomatoes, there's and strawberries. However, you also have an option to produce green peppers, cucumbers, and onions. Along with watermelons, ignore the water capacity, I'll explain that in a sec, it was just a way of setting this all up. So yeah, in terms of inputs and that, actually you don't really use much of the fertilizer and that, like again, I've had this going on for months, barely made a dent in it, it was just a pain in the ass to get everything up here because I've, where I've had to transfer everything over and that, but yeah, besides from that, it actually wasn't too bad. Apples we are out of. So yeah, could do with another apple or orchid. Could do some more, yeah, apples and strawberries. So they're the low outputs, but for like pickles, apricots and plums, everything's keeping up. So cucumbers is just about keeping up. So if you want this at full efficiency, I'll have another one that produces the apples, tomatoes and strawberries. So yeah, I need another apple orchard, and I'll say another, yeah, large greenhouse or so to keep everything topped up. But yeah, so I very, yeah, so you can take these as it is, or process them, 
in the fruit and vegetable processing plant. And yeah, you'll find it under build mode, under factories. Towards the end, so yeah. Slot count is, yeah, 16 slots goes down to one. And yeah, it does require sugar for most of these, like the jams and that. And yeah, once you get it all processed, you can sell them at the farmer's market. So, that's a customized sell point. Five slots goes down to one. And yeah, actually, let's look at the prices and see if there's any favoredness. So, let's go with apricot jam, farmer's market. Oh, I'll say that's within margin of error in terms of it being favoured in that. If anything, slightly higher by a couple of percent compared to on average. But besides from that, yeah, you're looking at, at most, a... Yeah, literally a couple percent, not even 10% difference. Yeah, you're looking at about a 7.5% difference in sell price. And that's within margin of error in terms of price, isn't that? So yeah, five slots go down to one. And yeah, you can make compost if you wish, if you've got under silos. Go towards the end. So yeah, let's go and place this here. So yeah, you can make your own compost. You can either buy it or make it your own. And yeah, compost, you can put in organic waste, straw, grass, hay, or other alternatives. If you want, they are the sugar beets, sugar beet cut, potatoes, sugar cane, Grapes, olives, chaff, and manure. Obviously, just dump it into compost silo, compact it, cover it, and it'll ferment within 24 hours of in-game time. Yeah, this costs 25,000, which you just looked at. Costs 25 to maintain. And yeah, now that's just compost big bags. So yeah, let's grab some organic, yeah, org organic waste. Get it filled up, and then, yeah. Let's get this compacted. So yeah, just grabbing our first bit of organic waste. So yeah, that is at the back of the uh, processing plant. Orchards don't have any option for this, but the greenhouses do. So yeah, all in all, for a couple of months of working at, we got 40,000 litres of organic waste. Seeing that, we didn't have the processing plant at full utilisation because I forgot the sugar for like four months. But yeah, so, yep, yeah, see, Phil Devil and that, lovely jubbly. And actually, I do wonder what the capacity is because it doesn't say on here. And actually, what I can do is, one thing I hate with bunker silos is the spillage at the front. So what I do is use the bunker size set. I think this is one by, oh, is it Black Sheep Modding? Yeah, turn it around. Make sure the dirt texture is on the outside. Yep, free build mode. Place those down. And yep, let me get this filled up and we'll see what the true capacity is. All right, so I'll say about 450,000 liters, and it is extremely easy to compact. It's not like a normal bunk soil clamp where it takes forever to compact it. It's literally, even with a normal medium tractor with no weights or no significant weights, it gets done within like literally a minute or two. Of course, I didn't think that. I just thought get the biggest tractor with 15 tons of weight and just go for it. But nah, so yeah. We're at 447, so yeah, I'll say about, yeah, 450,000 litres, because there is a bit of space here. But yeah, compact it and see how long that takes to ferment. So yeah, it was like 12.51, me sorry fermenting this, so yeah, it's exactly 24 hours. Let's wait for another, yeah, it's around about 12 o'clock, so about... 23, 24 hours, you would be really exact, but anywho, yeah, that's done fermenting. So, yeah, 20, 24, 23, 24 hours, not too bad. So, now that is some delicious compost. And again, like, we literally skipped ahead of the day and barely we've touched anything. 
the water. I'm using the recent soil extension. This is the automatic water for animals and greenhouses. Yeah, I can't remember who it was by or where I found it on the mod hub, but yeah, look for yeah automatic water for animals and greenhouses. And yeah, I'll just get I'll see I was getting lazy in that. That's to be honest, I was getting proper lazy in that. But anyways, this mod review took a lot longer than that than intended, but that's the thing, that's my soil mod reviews and that. I want to make sure every mod is looked at in detail. I came in with the gem production yesterday. There's one bit I did miss. It wasn't for the uh what was it? Mod maker pointed out for me, but apart from that, in general I don't miss anything. I need to skip through the rain. But yeah, so now it is 6 o'clock, approaching in real life, and yeah, get us done, get us uploaded, and then on to the two map tours. Once again, over two maps, and then, yep, yeah, hopefully I can actually get some sleep tonight. I need more mods than that to do at 4 o'clock in the morning. But anyways, that's where I'm going to leave it today, and as always, hope you enjoyed this mod review. If so, smash the button, feel free to down below. If you want to share some, please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to it, then please consider. But for you to do, hope you're stay. But for now, this will be for Envoy Extreme, and I'll see you all very soon.